Hello everyone, uh, Delta here, and welcome to the newest uh, XVM tutorial for World of Tanks. Uh, this tutorial has been asked for by a lot of people here recently, and I, I, I apologize for not having gotten this out sooner. Um, this is going to be a slightly different tutorial, as I'm not going to take you through the manual installation of the mod itself. I'm actually going to show you an awesome way of getting it um, done without having to go through all the trouble of figuring out where to put each file in the ResMods folder and stuff like that. Uh, so, what I'm actually going to do is give you guys a link in the description below, and probably in the, here in, in this video somewhere, on to get the OMC Mod Pack, or the Odom Mortis uh, Mod Pack. Uh, here's the website. It's, uh, it's a mod pack, obviously created by the clan Odom Mortis. And I have to tell you that I, I swear by this mod pack now because not only does it give you XVM, it gives you a cornucopia of different mods that it installs for you. So there's not nearly as much trouble trying to figure out what files goes where, which ones do I need to delete if it's a faulty mod, you know, what files do I need to replace, this kind of stuff. What do I need to make a backup of, what do I need to move to the ResMods folder, all that you don't have to worry about with this mod pack anymore. Now, it doesn't have every mod out in existence for what things in it, but it's got quite, it's got all of the good ones. So, to begin, you need to go to this website. Again, I will provide the link in the description. And then you will go up here to OMC Mod Pack, and you will left-click on that link. At which point, you will then go to the middle one here saying Download, and click on it. It's 2.5 megs. Okay, McAfee is going to be a douche with me right now I apologize anyways so you get your little prompt here for the installer where you will hit save file two and a half megs it'll download in just a few seconds if you've got faster than I do it'll be almost instantaneous so well I'm not reached that part yet anyways I apologize uh, go ahead and get that connected so you download your OMC mod pack it will appear with an icon that looks like this. It's that one right there. What you will then do, double click on it to start the install process. I promise you, McAfee, my save search crap flagged it. However, I've been going to this site for I don't know how long and getting this mod pack, so I promise it's a safe site. Anyways, you'll bring have the install window pop up. Just follow the prompts. Let it install where it needs to go. It'll do. Once it's done, it's as you saw, it's pretty quick. You'll have the option to go ahead and launch it. So that's what we're going to do. So it'll do its checking um, about if you're finding your it'll find your World of Tanks. Uh, see right here, it'll ask where your World of Tanks folder is. If it didn't pop up the right thing, just hit Browse and go and find your World of Tanks folder. Uh, it's usually under you know uh, C drive or whatever your default hard drive is, and under Games, and then is right there. So you'll have that. You don't have to worry about compatibility mode. Um, and I allow it to send anonymous data to the, to the Odom Mortis guys um, because it, it helps them improve their stuff. So you'll have this. You'll hit next. It'll do all of its installing stuff. It'll check uh, file bases on their servers, download all that good stuff. Now, I already have all my mods installed, so I'm not going to run through the full installation, but I am going to show you guys the list and what I personally use. So once it's finished, it'll pop up this. Now, if you already have mods installed, and let's say your World of Tanks is messing up, but you don't, know, but you know that some mods are working and some aren't, so you don't know which ones you need to delete, that's fine. This will take care of it. And if there are any mods that you have installed that aren't a part of the OMC mod pack, you can easily just go and reinstall those. The first thing you want to do, though, is make sure that the clean installation part is uh, bubbled in. This way, there's no way that because the mod pack won't delete some mods if it's not ones that it has or whatever and it may conflict files and therefore your World of Tanks will either crash on trying to start it up or won't load into a battle or it'll crash after a battle or whatever. So you'll have clean installation checked. Uh, these two, this new part here is new from when I last time I did it but apparently you can actually um, play on different regions like I guess the RU if you live here in the US like I am and you're on the NA server I guess you could go play on the RU server personal preference I'm not going to use it and you don't want to delete the cache unless you're just having problems um, 
if you're having game speed issues, maybe hang, you know, hang of the game at server change, blah, blah, blah. Now, going through the list here, your very first thing is this mod pack support tool. You can have it checked, and you can easily bring up the mod their mod pack support channel. It's got TeamSpeak support, but it's in World of Tanks. And it's a little button that appears somewhere on the screen. I can't recall exactly where. I prefer not to have it in there. <clears throat> the next one is the big part. The whole thing that this tutorial is about is XVM. So, if you want XVM, obviously, make sure this box has another little dot in it. Um, and it'll automatically download all the main files, the most recent XVM files, if you've got the most recent mod pack installer inst uh, on your computer. Uh, you can then, it'll also get the um, clan icons for you. Just choose whatever region you're in, whichever server that your clan, or if you just want to see all the clans, you know, that kind of stuff. Then you get down to the... Uh, uh, configurations that come on the mod pack itself. Uh, I will go over a little bit later. I will give you the I will give the link for the custom where you can make your custom configuration file. I'm not going to run through doing that. Uh, it takes up a lot of time. You can if you want to see what I personally used in the past, you can go reference one of my older videos. Uh, what I typically go with is the OMC XVM configuration because it has a lot of nice options that you can choose from. For instance, on the mini map here, I like to have a two row, uh, two row display on tank icons when they appear, which is the player name and the tank name and where they are. Uh, next, I go. I don't do the dead tanks mark on the mini map, or I don't disable that. I should say, because uh, I like to see where tanks died. I mean, just it's I don't know personal preference. Uh, here, this is a very handy feature. I think it was implemented in just a straight out stock thing in World of Tanks, but I still use this anyways. I like the, the show lost enemies, so if you have an enemy that's appeared on the mini-map and then they become, you know, unspotted, you can get an idea of where they last were um, before they disappeared if it's later in the game and they haven't reappeared since. Very handy thing to have. Also, I'd like to say that if you're ever wondering what a particular part of a mod or a mod looks like when you're going through this thing, you can simply right-click on the mod, and it'll bring up this little preview window, and if it has previews, it'll load in and give you a preview. Uh, sometimes, however, they will not always have it, or it will be really slow loading, so you just have to close it out. Uh, let's see if this one has it. Yeah, this has a picture. See, you can get a picture and see what it'll show you um, on the mini-map. So, that's what you can easily click on that, and right-click on any mod in here, and if it has a picture or the previews it can give you, it will give you that. Anyways, moving on. Uh, you can do a mini-map artillery site. I don't, personally. Uh, this is what it would look like if the picture will load. Yeah, um, this is what it looks like. However, I actually think that comes with another mod that I have, or or another thing that's on here. Anyways, move. Um, going on through, you can just you can look through the list of all the mods available, uh, all the different parts of XVM. I like the players panel, I keep it medium standard. You can choose other types like Yasha, the Yasha edition, the white edition. Um, highlight, you know, just these different options. I do disable the AOMC starting battle logo, and I use the Wattlab's new W8 skill that has 10 color steps for XVM ratings. Uh, the old video I have where it explains the different colors is outdated because of this 10 color step if you choose to use it. Uh, I like this one better, I guess because it gives a more detailed breakdown of the skill, or the uh, calculated skill, rather, of a player. Um... You can choose to have it auto log in for you. You can skip the intro, which is it just simply skips the T for Teen part uh, that pops up. Uh, you can have a save the last server. So you know, because the way they've done it now is it automatically defaults to having you auto log into auto. You know, it'll choose whichever server has the fastest ping. If you're in the NA server, you know, there's the NA East and the NA West. And if you live in Jersey or New Jersey and it logs you in the NA West, obviously you're going to have a lot of lag. <coughs> even though for some reason at the time, I guess your ping was better there. You can set east, and then the mod will remember it so you don't have to worry about changing it every time. Uh, you can choose how many rows in the tank carousel will come up so you can get to your tanks quicker. Plenty of other nice things it'll show, uh, like the battle tier, the marks on the gun, all this kind of good stuff. Battle results window, you know, you, then you get six cents, the little pop-up, you know, the default's a little light bulb, and I think a ding. With this, you can choose the different looks. Uh, General Akbar is a pretty funny one. Uh, and you can also have it where he actually come up and say it's a trap, or any of those kind of things. You know, you scroll through, there are a there's a plethora of mods to choose from that you can easily install. Crosshair mods, 
gun constraint mods is actually kind of nice because you can tell when you're about to rotate when you're in artillery mode or with a tank destroyer when you're getting near the edge where you have to move your tank again. Server side crosshair stuff for you. Zoom mods of where you can zoom out to 500 meters away from your tank and pretty much see the entire map. Or even a 30 times zoom scope when you go into sniper mode. Talk about being able to see where you, exactly where you want to shoot. Uh, you can get an indicator if you want, the mouse wheel, behavior stuff, damage panels, damage indicators. It'll tell you, you know which way the damage is coming from. Nice info panels. Um, and if a game, if it's a, uh, a mod that's out of date or whatever, it'll have, they'll be grayed out and say out of date or need adding, those kind of things. So you don't accidentally install a mod that's not been updated for the current version of World of Tanks. You know, you go on down, you have all these different things that you can get that are wonderful to have. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't have every one of them because I don't need every one of them. Safe Shot is a beautiful mod that I use. It makes it to where you, when you aim at a friendly tank, or let's say you're about to shoot an enemy, and a friendly tank drops in front of you. We've all had this happen, to where the friendly tank drops in front of you right as you, right as you click to shoot, and all of a sudden you've ammo racked your friend and are losing crap loads of money and have probably turned blue. Nobody likes to be turned blue. Now it's fun to, I'm not going to say, it's it, it's funny to see your friend get ammo right, or your, your teammate to get ammo right, because he was, you know, pulled in front of your shot at the time. However, this makes it to where it's very hard to do, because uh, if your cursor ends up right on top of the tank, of your friendly tank, it will not fire, it won't let you. Also, if you are in, let's say, a medium wolf pack, and are out there just annihilating all the enemies you come across... And you all gang up on this one tank, let's say it's an E100. And you guys are all ganging up on it, and you're about to get the last shot, but somebody reloads a, like a half a second faster than you, and you both click, and he gets the kill. Well, you won't fire if, as long as the tank dies. For the next two seconds, if you click on that dead corpse, your gun won't fire at it. So it saves you the uh, ammo. And you have different choices you can choose there, where you can actually do friendly fire, but there's no corpse, that kind of thing. Um, hanger mods, we can have a hanger look different. Auto equip stuff. It'll it's a smart learning feature that um, let's say you always equip vents on a tank and rammers and gun laying drives. Eventually, it will learn that. So whenever you buy a tank of a certain type, it will automatically pop those on if you have the money available. Just you can keep looking through to get different things. Uh, one of the things that I like uh, to get is on down here near the bottom. You can get tank the tank skins if you want. Are the voice add-ons, I love the UT voices by Low Cast and Generation, the three-minute marker, the first blood thing. And, of course, the engine sounds, weapon sounds, hit sounds, turret traverse sounds if you want them, crew uh, things. You can also get music. I personally love the ACDC music because it gets me pumped every time I start to play. Uh, it's just great when you start rolling down the battlefield and are about to get into the action and, and Hell's Bell starts playing or Highway to Hell. So, yeah, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. Anyways, this is what you do. Once you have all of your mods that you want to install on there, you hit next, you'll follow the on-screen directions, it'll go through, it will download and install all the mods for you. Uh, it'll and once, once it's done, it'll be at the finish window. We'll have options for it to create certain icons, even a World of Tanks icon. I usually don't check, I usually don't have any of those checked and hit finished. Once you hit finished, you're done. It's all installed. And it, it's that simple, and it's what I swear by now. The manual installation was getting tedious, it's why I stopped doing the tutorial videos because it was the same thing over and over again um, with just minor changes here and there. And this 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 mod pack installer just streamlines every bit of it, and you can get all of your favorite mods without having to go to a thousand different websites to find them. So that's that's that. Uh, yes, we're gonna exit setup next. Is if you want to do your own custom XVM configuration, this screen ought to look familiar if you've watched my previous tutorials. <laughs> Excuse me. I will provide a link in the description for this custom, for this editor if you want to use it. If not, then you can just disregard this. Uh, the last and final part that uh, some people uh, may not necessarily know about when it comes to using XVM is you've got XVM installed thanks to the mod pack, or if you've done it manually, you've got it there. That's great and wonderful, but now you notice when you go into a battle that nobody's statistics are loading. Everything's just kind of a dashed out line. There's no wind chance or for a wind chance for the alive, none of that kind of stuff. And you're like, Delta, why is none of this working? Well, that's because the XDXVM guys have actually added a nice feature that makes you don't have to worry about that part. All you've got to do is go to their website 
I will provide a link in the description as well for it, obviously. You will go to sign in. It will give you an option for your server, whether it be the Russian, the North American, the European, the Asian, or the Korean server, I believe that is. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. But anyways, I'm on the NA server, so I'm going to click NA. When you click that, it will load, and I apologize for my internet being slightly slow today. It will f redirect you to the wargaming.net login screen, and it's saying that it will say there's a request to log you in through the VM site. You hit continue sign in. It will then redirect you here, where you will have stuff in Russian, apparently. Uh, I swear, it's usually in English. I'm going to choose English and see if that changes. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so you'll get to this screen. As you notice, I'm now logged into XVM. NA, there's my name. You have these these things where you can log out. You hit uh, activate service is the very first thing you want to go to. I'm sorry if I'm stuttering here. I'm, I'm thinking of a thousand steps at once. Anyways, you will click activate services. It will then, if you don't have this up there, if you've never done this before, it will then pop up 14 days. That means for two weeks, your XVM statistics and tracking stuff is now activated uh, to where it will uh, now show up win rate if you have it as an option selected it will show the skill the win rates all of this of all the people on your team and the enemy team all the stuff you're used to seeing with regular with the old xvm now you will there's one thing you will notice that if you just do that and go on and play there will not be a chance to win that a lot of people like to have up there uh to fix that you will go here to settings and you will notice you have these nice little uh, these options here player stat in the battle, their awards, the company screen, all this lovely stuff. You want everything checked. The chance to win is right here. That'll give you, you know, the 70% chance to win or the 22% chance to win. And then you have this chance to win live. What that means is as you lose, as each team loses players and tanks, the uh, chance to win live part will fluctuate up and down, showing the odds of you being able to win after certain people have been eliminated. Like, let's say you're on a team and you've got a 30% chance to win, and they have a platoon of, let's say, three guys over there that have really great stats. And those get those that platoon ends up running into bad luck, and they all three die. If you then look, hitting tab, your chance to win live will be upwards of you know 70 and 80% at that point. It, it fluctuates. Same thing if you, um, you start losing more players than they do, your chance will go down from that 30 down to 20 and so forth, so on and so forth. So have all those checked. Make sure you're logged in. Like I said, you'll get 14 days. And once that's done, if you've already got World of Tanks open, you'll have to restart World of Tanks for it to update and start working. Uh, if you haven't got it open, just start it up. All your mods are going to be there, and everything will be absolutely golden. And you'll be good to go. Uh, well, that does it for this tutorial. Um, that's all you need to know. One last thing, I, when the OMC mod pack thing is done installing, it will create this icon, which is an update reconfigure thing. That's what you will go to from now on and not this installer link or icon. You will use that if you want to change mods you have or what and, and whatnot. So I hope this video helps you guys. Uh, don't forget to like it and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Please check out my social media. I'm on Twitter and Facebook right now. I plan on expanding to more of the social networks like Instagram and all those in the future. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment or message me on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter. Um, I'll try to answer as best I can. Uh, thank you guys, and I'll see you guys next.